What's going on, FCF Church and family and friends? Pastor Pete, Pastor Kim. Pastor Randy. I feel like we're, yeah, why don't you pull Pastor Randy up? Okay, let me get him. Let me get him. Oh, it's Pastor Randy. Pastor Randy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy isn't near as smart as him. Uh-uh. Should we leave him there? Maybe for a little while. What? <laughs> Need the it's, haircut. it's tickling me. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, we got people getting on here. I'm going to go to the page and I'm going to share the video. This is sure to get some attention. We leave this guy sitting right here next to us. Yeah. What video you shared? This oh. video. Oh. <laughs> us. You. you gotcha. Peas and carrots. Do peas us. and carrots. Let's see. FCF is live now. All right. Yeah, his glasses aren't. Are his glasses straight? I can't tell. I need to get them straight there. Okay, why don't you tell us who's watching and where you're watching from. Yeah. And I'm going to try to watch your questions down here. Hello, FCF. What's going on? Okay. Feel free to like and share the video in case you're wondering. This is Pastor Randy. Mm -hmm. I know what you're thinking. He's, he smiles less. we got to give him kind of a little bit of a <laughs> smile. Hope you're having a fantastic week. Great stuff going on. I think we didn't move him. What? Makes, you makes, don't think we should leave it here? <laughs> no, I don't think we should. Right, you want some? Oh! <laughs> oh! Cheap, cheap glasses? Yes, Pastor Randy is on vacation, so here he goes. He's headed off to Somewhere. relaxation. Relaxation land. Yeah. Hope you're doing well. Actually, these are your glasses. Yes, or, I Or are they my glasses? What do you think? Uh, if you want to look older. Older? <laughs> Wow. It's not, it's not IQ points? Mm -mm, no, it's more you, like older. I'll tell you what, Pastor Kim. More mature. These are incredibly smudged <laughs> to a spectacular degree. <laughs> how, how much zoom are they? Uh, 175, I think. 175. Yeah, yeah. they're big. Yeah. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> a lot of craziness going on here at FCF. We'll give a couple of seconds for people to hop on. Jesse Who's Howard. Who's with us? And JD here watching as we work from home. Fantastic. I don't know that we've had the pleasure yet, Jesse. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I need to. Josh Williams is giggling. <laughs> Jackie Smith. Hello, friends. Jake and Blackie. Jake and Blackie. I just said that. Jake and Blackie. Blake <laughs> and Jackie. Hope you guys are doing well. We've had a, an adventurous morning already, so I'm going to drink a little bit more. Give you yeah. a second to sh like and share, people to hop on. It's been so adventurous. Pastor Pete is talking so fast. Every time he comes talk to me, I'm like, what are you saying? Slow down there, cowboy. It started he at 6.30. My yeah. day started. My first phone call was at 7. And then I had a meeting at 9.30. And then I had a meeting at 10.30. Between the 9.30 and the 10.30 call, um, the water at church stopped working. Uh, we had to fix something. <laughs> Our facility's not, got, yet, is it? not yet. <laughs> so they're working on that, and so I've been kind of juggling things simultaneously. So if I'm talking too fast, just tell me to slow down. Kathy Ray from Emmitsburg is watching. Kathy, yeah. Okay. All right, so we are going to take some questions. You can feel free to throw questions in the chat, and we will talk about answering them. We also may not answer them. It just depends on how we're feeling, how excited we are. Uh, right. Anybody excited to hear Pastor Kim speak on Sunday? And another thing. If you weren't watching, my, my um, message was the, the one thing, thing, and Pastor Kim's is... Another thing. You don't want to give us. You want to give us any? Well, I wanted to uh, let everybody kind of guess. If Pastor Pete was the one thing, and I'm going to be another thing, what do you think? What that is the other, other thing? Thing is. Yeah. Go, go ahead, ahead and put it. Go ahead and put it in the chat. We'll wait. Drop us your guess. I'm going to take a bite of my diet bar. Mm-hmm. I'll let you. Sandra Maples is on. Josh Williams. Nadine. Hi, Nadine. We love the church. We love you, dear. You're awesome. She has been around. She goes way back. Pastor Randy's known her for a long, long time. Middletown Baptist? Mm-hmm. Yep. Awesome. Yep. So the question is, my message was the one thing that will change your life, and it was reading the Bible, and Pastor Kim had, and another thing. So the question is, what is the other thing? Go ahead. Any guesses in the chat? What is she going to speak about? What's yeah. the another thing that will change your life? 
What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Anybody? Hello, Miss Nadine. Anybody? Anybody? Ooh. Anybody? Gonna throw a guess in there? Josh Williams, come on. Sandra Maples, you're so sweet, honey. Good to see you. Josh Williams says prayer. Any other guesses? Mm, any other Jackie guesses? Smith says Ooh, there's a Ooh, lot of prayer. A lot of prayers in there. Autumn and Jim mm. Lawson. Ah, have I met them? Uh, no, I've not seen them in church. Um, well, I'm gonna I think they I'm, moved. Didn't Autumn? You got? Do you guys still live around here? It for says some? lives in Frederick. Oh, Frederick. Okay. So I'm gonna friend request you. All righty. I'm the stalker. Mm-hmm. Ashley also says that, prayer. Yeah, prayer, prayer, prayer. Everybody Nadine Thompson, prayer. whatever is it, will be great. Oh, that is true. That is so nice. Sh let her finish. Let her finish. Let her finish. <laughs> Thank you, Nadine. Pastor Kim is great. We are Those blessed. Five, I have not been since COVID. Autumn. Not been since COVID. Awesome. Well, I hope to meet you in person at some point. Bless you. Right. Any other questions before Pastor Kim dives into? Yeah. It looks like we have, uh, again, the message that I sp spoke on for two times in a row was the one thing, and Pastor Kim's is, a, and another, th and another thing, and it looks it, like... If you really want, it's more like, and another thing. Oh, you, you gotta, give, it, give it to you me again. Give it the, and another thing. Another thing. Another thing. Okay. That's and, how we say it in West Virginia. And we have one, two, three, four guesses that it's prayer. Ooh. So let's uh, let's see if anybody else. Two, three, four. Yeah, it looks like four. Any other guesses? Twenty-seven watching. Thirty watching. Look at this. Wow. Do you I tell them that they're? I mean, do I give it away? It's only for the. Well, only for the thirty watching online yeah. right now. Would you like me to? Should tell she you? tell you? Should she give you the? Should I tell you or should I not? Should I say or should I go? Ba -bum -ba -bum -ba -bum -ba -bum. Most of y'all don't know this. So Pastor Kim is a vocalist. <laughs> She's a closet vocalist. And by that you mean vocal sounds come out. It doesn't matter if they're in tune or not. They just come well, out because... Don't let her, don't let her lie to you. She got the goods. We are going to answer questions here in a second. No one in my family does. We are... We have a fellowship. fellowship. She wants a spoiler. A fellowship. Okay. I think you give it to him. I give it to him. So, the the first thing, or one thing, the one thing, mm -hmm. was reading your Bible. And another thing is... Well, uh, you know, God talks to us through His Word, so we talk to God through... Boom! Prayer! Come yes, on! Come on so now! They go together like peas and carrots. You... So... All of you that put prayer... You get a hundred extra points. Uh, I was going to say heaven bucks, <laughs> but we'll give you points too. Whatever, heaven Pastor points. Pastor Kim, yeah. uh, Goldberg bucks. <laughs> <laughs> we used to have Randy bucks. <laughs> we put a picture on there just to be so. That's story. awesome. I love it. Okay, so go ahead and you can fire questions in here into the chat. Feel free to like and share the video, and um, we're going to ask you're going to ask some questions. So okay, I'm going to start. I got a question. Someone asked about translation. I miss Judy. Trans, Bible translate, Bible translations. So the question was kind of like, which is the best translation? Interesting question. So okay, which kind of falls in line with the message, which is probably where yeah. the, the sermon, the question came from. Again, we taught taught about uh, reading the Bible, and I think this person was responding and wanted to read. So they asked, "What's the best translation?" The answer would be, it depends on what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So. Some of you may know this, some of you may not, but there are three kind of ways that the Bible is translated. You have what's called a dynamic equivalency translation, which is what the NIV is. And it's kind of a, a thought for thought translation. There's a bunch of these, but you can look them up. Most common is kind of the NIV is a thought for thought translation. Then you have what's called a direct equivalency translation. A direct equivalency translation is word for word. So what the Greek word is, they try to put the English word with it, Hebrew word, English word with it, and that's what uh, New King James is, King James, American Standard. Um, I think those are probably the most common that you would know. 
And then the, what the, would probably be the problem difficulty with that one though? Word that for word. Word for word. Well, can, can I hit you at the end? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the third way that the Bible is translated is considered a paraphrase, which the most common paraphrase is. Anybody guess what the most common paraphrased Bible is translation? You can put it in the chat. If there's one, the heavenly crypto. <laughs> That's what kind of points you got. That's right. Yeah. You've heard of uh, Bitcoin. Yeah. This is heaven coin. I don't know. Yeah. But what do you what do you think is the most most common uh, translation that is a paraphrase? It is very common. I think th I think it, it was written. Is this Eugene? Yeah. I th I th what, do, what do you think? The Message Bible's been ten years. At least. At least 10 years. At least. So the message is, is, is what this. Okay, so what is the difference? So uh, a dynamic equivalency translation is, is great for reading and devotional, and you're able to capture the thought and, and also um, kind of get the heart of what's being said, potentially. Um, so paraphrases and dynamic equivalency translations are best for doing devotions. Now, a direct equivalency translation where you're taking a word-for-word -word translation of the Bible, this is what Theanustos, uh, God breathed, and you direct translate it. S some, sometimes, which that was actually the NIV, which is a dynamic, but what happens is we may not understand what's being said. This happens a lot, a lot, when preachers are trying to do word studies with scripture. They'll take a word and they'll break the word down and they'll focus on just the word. The problem is when a, a writer or a translator of the Bible is, is translating, the context of that word may mean different things in different places. We see this, of course, a ton in the English language. So the answer is for study, which is generally what I, what I would use it for where I'm studying, I would use an NASTB, New American Standard Bible, or a New King James. But they do not read smoothly, and a lot of times you will you can lose um, understanding. So it's it's good. I think it's best to study all versions if you can. But from the message of the living, Paul Berrios, my man. How are you, brother? Happy birthday to your son. Okay, message came out in the 90s. I wow! It was a long time ago. How old am I? I don't know. <laughs> See, in my head, I'm still, you know, right about 28, uh -huh. 29. I'm only about 10 years off. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, the message, uh, uh, paraphrased, direct equivalency translation, dynamic equivalency translation. Also, paraphrase, if, you, if you're averse to paraphrases, they're great, great, great for family devotions great for kids. You can read the Message Bible and it really will come alive to a kid. Whereas if you start doffing and veeing them with the, the NKJV, you may lose them a little bit. I was thinking a challenge with word for word also. Sometimes there isn't a word. Oh, There's yes, a word in one language, course. the original language, and That's... we don't necessarily have a word. And so the, the translators have to kind of try to again capture that as best they can. And it may not translate as strongly and that's why then you go into the dynamic because then whether they seek to translate that concept then when you don't have to absolutely word. And, and word i mean i would encourage you too to read your bible don't to, to, <laughs> that's a great encouragement <laughs> it should it should it should be a, a message on that maybe i would encourage you not to just read but to study your bible yes. so to find a way that you can uh, actually <laughs> see what's trying to be said which the best way to do is to read in several different translations Yep. Good call there, Paul. And with this, I want to mention we offer a class, a one evening mm. class called Basics. We Bible offer basics. about every couple months. And in one night, you get this overview that helps you understand how to study, read, meditate on Scripture, and then even understanding how the Bible is laid out that can help you so much in reading it. So our next one is in November. It's on a Monday. I believe it's the 15th, 14th, 16th, somewhere around there, wherever that Monday is. Anybody, I'll write that down. Anybody got a calendar? Okay. Yeah. Were you going to give us more of the, because uh, I just talked a bunch, so you should talk. You want to give us a little bit of your sermon, or you want to hold back? No, I'm holding back. They already Ooh. guessed prayer, so I can't Ooh. give any more than that. Don't give them any more. Uh -huh. Okay. I got a question for you, Pastor Kim. Are you ready? Yep, yep, yep. Are you sure? Don't look. You're cheating. The question is this. This came in Facebook? Uh, no, or, I think on our app. Through the app. Yeah. Through the FCF app. Thanks. 
Which, by the way, we do have a brand new website getting ready to getting launch. Ready. Ooh, you're going you're gonna to like this one. The question is this. My husband and I, over the weekend, went to Kentucky for our 12-year anniversary. I guess we happy can say anniversary. It. Yeah, happy anniversary. Can we say? Carrie, I think it's it's D O U Dob. Okay. It looks like. Um, while we were while we were there, they went to the Ark Experience. Something that really confused us was when we started walking around. They showed dinosaurs in a lot of cages. Did Noah really take dinosaurs on the Ark with him? I mean, when I picture, okay, they're too big. I think is what she's getting at. Yeah. Well, and there's the big question of when were dinosaurs on the earth? Mm -hmm. And the real simple answer, because I'm a simple person, and this is not something I've done like a lot of study. I've, I've known the things that Pastor Randy has taught, but that basically there's two theories about the age of the earth. There's young earth, which said, those creationists say that God created the earth in six literal 24-hour period mm -hmm. days, and which would make the earth, what, about 6,000 years yep. old or so? Old earth says that they those represent um, time periods yeah and that so the earth would literally be millions or billions of years old right I, I believe those are the yeah. two thought processes I have very close friends mm -hmm. who are very wise on both sides of this conversation yeah so do you want to give us what your belief is um, well my belief is only that if they were if if it was and and um, even the Ark encounter they are young Earth. Mm -hmm. the, they believe in a they young believe Earth. in a young Earth, so that's yes. why they are showing literal six little yeah. Days. So that's why they are showing uh, their slant or their perspective on this that dinosaurs would have been on if they would have been. I think it's simple. All the animals were baby animals. You know what I mean? I'm oh. sure uh, uh, Abraham didn't go around and let let me go pick the biggest lion that I can pick mm -hmm. and have to feed that huge lion and deal with his poop on the ark. So you're saying just because so, there was, there could be dinosaurs, they just may not be the giant triceratops that we're picturing. Right. They would have done. Like if you baby. watch uh, what was Jurassic Park, the little baby ones. <laughs> yes. Where they, they that's, this is but. a very scientific, they take the needle mm -hmm. with the drill and Goldblum they pull the and then they synergize yeah. and fill in with frog DNA. Right. And then they yeah. replicate into. Yeah. I think we've derailed. Yeah. We probably have. But the bottom line is those the the Ark uh, encounter is young Earth people and as not only Pastor Pete not only his friends but brilliant brilliant wise minds people. wise people fall on both sides of that and the, when you read about it it's like you have to have a scientific mind it's just like it hurts my brain to particularly when you read old Earth stuff it's like very. Or, and Judy says dinosaur eggs. There you go. Yes. Dinosaur eggs. Mm -hmm. Would you like to know what I believe? If you would like to know what I believe, say yes, I want to know what you believe. Put it in the chat. If you guys don't care, then we'll just move on. But we'll see. If a couple of you would like to know what I believe, go ahead and hit the chat, and I'll tell you what it is. Simple. Before God made humans, the earth was his giant lizard battle, battle arena. arena. <laughs> I like Jesse Howard. She uh, is awesome. Good. Okay, we got a yes. We got a yes. Yeah, we got a yes. What do you think? Here's what I think. I believe that God created the earth. Beyond Damn. beyond a shadow of a doubt. That's what I believe. Damn. You like that? Did that help yeah. you or hurt you? <laughs> yeah. I, I have actually been on both sides of this. I think right now I lean towards a young earth, but I, I for a while I was on the other side. You you can you can feel feel free to give me I think Pastor Randy may be old earth. He, I think he leans that yeah. way, uh, and again, but he, he's, he's, there's so much to it, so he just oh, says, yeah. and the things that he's read, he tends to think, but that he wouldn't be dogmatic about that. Yeah. You know a theory I heard one time, and I I don't think it's bad to just share a theory, because that's what we're talking about, right? Yeah, of course. But someone I'd heard said something interesting, where in the beginning Genesis, where it says, on the first day, on the second day, that that first day means it was the revelation given to Moses on the first day. Mm. So Moses, because Moses wrote Genesis, so he's writing down on the first day. So he was on the mountain on the first day. This is the revelation God gave him of that first, his first day of creation. You know what I mean? Yes. I just thought it was interesting. So the, the, there was, it was speaking that, to, to the actual day that it was written and not the day that it was created. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Tony Wetzel, how are you, buddy? Thanks for protecting us. You're an awesome guy. I miss you. I need a hug. My man. Dinosaur egg. I like the dinosaur eggs comment. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Okay, I got another question. Got another question. So last week, um, some people asked about spanking. And, Ooh, uh, you that's and sin. Pastor Randy kind of gave your thoughts on that uh, in parenting spanking. But just in general, like what would you say is your philosophy? For Hold on parenting? one second. I see somebody uh -oh. commenting. Oh, question? No. No. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Oh, this is okay. what I need to be looking at. Uh, okay, sorry. I'm, I'm back now. I thought, I thought, is that weird? It is telling me. Okay. Go ahead. If we have a question, go ahead and throw it in there. I, I misread a text and then I clicked in the wrong window. Okay. So go ahead. You like that? Like Philosophy right on education. Philosophy I mean, on education. Not education, parenting. I think parenting. it should get education. I think yes, it's, it's good. 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 Um, what was the word I made up on Sunday morning? Ma um, it, between it was it was second service. Ma mama something was it that one? Ma yeah, uh, I can't remember. Or mammalian or something like that. Ma oh no, mammalian. Mammalian. Mammalian oh. is a it's it's like mammal like your mammalian oh. response. See, I didn't, I didn't make that up. It. Don't so know sorry. how old the earth is, but I know God made it. That's what I said, Aunt Judy. That's what I'm saying. Um, no, mammalian. Mammalian. No, no, I, I, I said like a Dr. Seuss word. Remember when I said it? Do you remember that? Or are you not yeah, in there? I was always in there, but I may not be paying attention. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I paid attention. Just like staff time. meeting. I start talking and she just glazes yeah, over just, her eyes. Only across. when he's talking fast and my I'm brain is fast. just like, I can't keep up with the speed of this. No, my, my brain is messed up. Okay. Oh, so the question was, my what was my philosophy parenting. on parenting? <laughs> you know, you said... You've always, when you were speaking, wanted to answer the phone, so now's the time. <laughs> That's the time to answer a phone during a message. Okay, so uh, probably a I'll give you a couple of them. The first one is that when it comes to parenting, um, and again, you're probably looking at me saying, this guy's had kids for a cup of coffee. That is true. I've just been blessed, and then I had two amazing sets of parents speak into my life, one being my wife's family and the other being my parents, both great parents. So I, I could pretend that I... Um, know everything, but I, do, I don't. I will tell you that my mom and dad raised uh, four kids. Uh, three of them are, are full-time vocational pastors, and one of them is, is married to a worship leader. And my mother and father-in-law raised three girls, and all of them love the Lord and are very active in ministry, one of them vocationally. So that's a pretty good... I mean, this is... I'm going to tip my hand, but... Um, one of the things I'm going to talk about the next time Pastor Randy asks me is uh, potentially, oh, I don't know. Should I tell him? Should you tell him? Yes. Is, is like, I think as soon as I finish speaking on one thing, God put, starts putting something else into your heart. And anyways, what I came up with this morning at 6 o'clock when my day started was voices and choices. Ooh. So that the voices that are in your life affect the choices Ooh. that you make. And to kind of roll all that out. That's good stuff. But, but, um, what I was going to say is, when it comes to parenting, when it comes to finance, when it comes to relationship, whatever it is, you want to find someone that is producing the results that you would like to see in your life. That's good. I'm going to say that again. Do, when, you, when you see a goal that you want for your family, like for me, I want my kids, honestly, I, I don't care that they're, I would love for them to be successful, I'd love for them to be healthy, but really what matters most to me is that they love the Lord. It's kind of crazy. So I'm going to find parents that, that love the Lord, and I'm parents whose children love the Lord, and I'm going to pattern my, my parenting style after that. Don't find the person that's flat broke to get financial advice from. Don't, <laughs> don't find potentially the person three times divorced and get relational advice. That, don't do that. You want to find somebody that has the goals that you're trying to aim for and, and pattern your life after them. Okay. That's um, good stuff. And I stumble across something every once in a while. So... That's, that's what I'm speaking of when it comes from a parenting perspective. I would say my parents always wanted to correct um, the heart and not behavior. That behavior is a result of the heart, but really what's, what's in there is what is most important. So if, if there's a mistake, like we don't spank, we talked about this, we don't spank mm -hmm. somebody if they make a mistake, but we, uh, we want to address issues of the heart, lying, deceit, uh, anything like that. Those are things that you, you definitely definitely want to be addressing, you want to be focused on. So, um, other parenting things that, that are a part of my philosophy. Um, I think, 
Oh, put the family first. I think so. Um, I don't. I don't want to be a public success and a private failure. That's good stuff. I don't want to be a public success and a private. I want to make sure that my my family. Oh, sorry. I would say if if it doesn't work at home, don't export it. So my dad would say. <laughs> so so make sure you're you're focused on your family. My kids. I love this thought process. For everybody, but I think it's it's the biggest struggle potentially for fathers that work outside the home, would be just two words. Here's the two words. You ready? Be there. Mm-hmm. Be involved in your kids' lives. Be it be a part of what that's that literally is fifty percent of the whole battle. Uh, my one of my mentors would always say when it came to youth ministry, he would say, make sure that you're if if you're if you're want to be invested. In, in your kids, and you, even from a youth perspective, go to the high school, go to football games. I remember, I remember being at cheerleading competitions with girls, and there, you know, I, Jess and I, like we, I, I, if you're a cheerleading person, I, I apologize. I don't really, I don't really, <laughs> it's not my thing. But I remember being at them, and the girls were, oh, I'm like, oh, y'all lost. It's terrible. I'm crushed, heartbroken. I, I'm just getting in the kids' lives. So it, it kind of transfers to parenting. Be involved in your kids' lives. Be there. Um, don't look to be a public success and a private failure. Our kids don't need our accolades. They don't need our money. They don't need our, they need us. They need us. And if, um, if you are involved in your kids' lives, it's very easy for them to be involved in your lives. So what else would I say parenting-wise? Uh, one other thought, and this one has the potential to offend people. I feel like I've been seeing a lot of those. You say that a lot lately. Uh, just, you know, pastoral, a, yeah. pastoral ministry is, t- is challenging at times. <laughs> so you got to tell people stuff they don't want to hear. Yeah. So I would say make church a priority. Mm. We make everything else a priority, and church seems to, to, to fall last. Now, obviously, at times you miss church, and you're doing stuff, and things happen. And um, I, I would be hesitant I would be hesitant to get my kids involved in any activity that took them out of church consistently. Um, and and uh, you're thinking, well, my kid is going to be the best baseball player in the world. Statistically, the chances of that happening are very low. I'm not saying it's not possible, but if your kid has to miss church every single week, what you're saying is that baseball or basketball or whatever the event is, is more important than church. And, and putting your kids in environments where they're going to grow and be healthy and when your voice starts to get quieter and quieter and quieter as an adult, for them to be in an environment where they're going to continue to hear the Word of God is important. And if they see um, Bible as as a, a or Bible or church as like a part-time thing that I can go to from time to time and it's not a consistent mm-hmm. thing, they probably won't make it a priority in their life. If it's not a priority in your life, it may not be a priority in their life. So that's strong. Is that offensive? It's kind of just truth. It's truth. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. make make church a priority in your life. And you, I've, I've heard parents say stuff like, well, I don't want to force them to go to church. And I want to be like, you force them to brush your teeth. You force <laughs> them to shower. You force them to eat. Like, why? How? how why not church? It's right. very important to them. Yeah. So and the other thing is, Make sure you're taking them to the right church. Yeah. A Bible-believing church that's te- teaching truth, that's a healthy community with a healthy culture, those are things that are important. So if you take your kids or invest them in an environment that's none of those things, then there is a chance that they'll resent God. But if the Bible is being taught, if truth is being taught in your church, then they won't resent you for it. So somehow viewership went up even though I was talking. Normally I talk and, and it goes down. But... <laughs> okay. Is, should I give any That's more? Good stuff. If you got anything, those are good Let nuggets. Let me see if I can go to some notes here. Those are good nuggets. Um, Small, um, simple concepts that have tremendous impact and power. Yeah. I mean, I can share some more stuff. They're probably getting sick of me. And you actually, oh, it is 12. It is officially 1 o'clock. So if you don't have any other, any other questions, oh, let's see here. I'm trying to look at this. Well, I was thinking, you've said uh, before, I think the last time you gave a message, you said, church isn't boring. You're boring. boring. That was another. 
that was another offensive thing. No, but it was true. And you said, you know, church is important. So I'm thinking families, kids, not boring, makes me think of costume and candy palooza. Oh, that's good. Coming up. Mm -hmm. Give them the context of that whole, like, church. I, I was saying that some people act like they're, like they're sad. They walk around sad, and they're baptized in pickle juice, and, like, there's no <laughs> joy in their life, and they're like, church is boring. And church isn't boring. Church is the highlight of my week. Anybody else love coming to church? Like, it, yeah. it is. I know my man. I'm going to call you out because I see you on the chat. My man Josh Williams, yes. um, they had a family event, and they were going away, which is great. Great. It's good to go away and get vacation. But he actually, um, he was sad. And I said, why are you sad? And he said, because I love church. I love, he actually serves in our church a lot. But he was sad that he had to miss a Sunday. So if you're going to a church that's boring, find another church. <laughs> if you're in Frederick County, I like FCF. Okay. You too. Yeah, so we okay. got a great family event coming up. It's, you know, Halloween weekend. It's it's Saturday, uh, September, October 30th. We're doing it in the morning hours, 10 to 12. And um, But it's sort of our version of that uh, yes. holiday or whatever. So we're going to, we have a costume and candy palooza. So kids come dressed up. We encourage the adults to. You don't have to, but it's fun too. And basically, um, we have all kinds of games for the kids, carnival type games, you know. But then we've, we're going to have an obstacle course. We have the moon bounces. We've got some balloon animals. We have a potato launcher. So there's a lot of fun stuff all outdoors. But then the kids, oh, and there's a, a petting zoo and a wagon ride, too. Fancy. Yeah. But then it kind of ends in one of the parking lots where we have then trunker treating for the kids. So I love it. So you can sign up at fcfchurch.com slash events for your family to come, to bring your kids, bring some neighbor kids with you or friends. Did you see inflatables um, already? Yep, we, well, moon bounces, yeah. Moon bounces, inflatables. And, um, but then you might also be like, well, I don't have kids, but it sounds like fun. Well, guess what? You can be a trunker. So you yeah. come, you're going to park your car in the parking lot, decorate it, and uh, hand out kit candy as the kids go through for trunk or treating. So fun, fun event coming up. Plan to be a part of it. Yeah. Plan to be there. Plan and, it. and Sunday, 9.15 and 11.15, child care in both services. Child classes. You say child care frequently. Child care for the little babies. Children's ministry. Children's ministry. For the, you know, kids are learning, not just child. Ooh, that's good. So that's you know spoken I mean? like a spiritual formation. Exactly. Factor. She's a big deal. We're She's not fancy. just babysitting kids no. back there. We are teaching, teaching them the them. word of God. And we're babysitting the little tiny ones. Little you know? buckaroos. Yeah, the little buckaroos. And the music pastor after he comes off the stage. Yeah. We're babysitting yeah. him. Yeah. Everybody else, they're hearing the word yeah. of God. Yeah. Okay, I always sit up and my forehead goes out of the screen. Mm -hmm. I'm just too tall. Maybe I, I, I'll put it, I got it on Pastor Randy's setting. Let me go to, here we go. <laughs> Pastor Pete setting. Is that better? <laughs> we love you, Pastor Andy. We miss you. We miss you. See yes, you next week. Not, this, not the same without him. We'll see you next week. Any other questions for us before we hop off? We'll give you another 30 seconds. I, I got one more thing you Fire. can say. Because this week is also child dedication. Oh! So we've been talking about parenting and kids. What is a child dedication? These, parent, these families are going to dedicate their kids on Sunday. They are choosing to raise them in a God-honoring way. There's a biblical standard, a biblical picture that we see in Scripture with Samuel. So you, you want to be a part of that. Pastor Randy will actually start the dedication by explaining that whole biblical precedent that's there and choosing, uh, choosing to raise your children in a way that honors God and to dedicate them to Christ. We see in Scripture where Samuel was given back to God. He was brought to the temple. So that's yeah. what we're going to talk about there. And we're going to do something that we have never done before. Um, Pastor Randy is on vacation, but he's he's going to be there this Sunday for this dedication, and then something special is going to happen uh, as as a part of it. Um, so at one point, I think I was going to be doing the dedications. I'm I'm not anymore. Pastor Randy's going to do them, and I'm we're going to do something separate after. That's going to be, I think it's pretty cool. I do so, too. So so uh, plan to be a part of that on Sunday. I think I'm too low now. Yeah, you're I look a little. I like how we switch a lot of things up these days and just do them a little bit different it's, it's, special. It's, a, awesome. it's a new season. Was that Martha Manuzzi? You ever hear her? Mm -mm. Good singer. Does anyone know who that is? Martha Manuzzi. She sings a song called uh, Israel New Breed. You ever heard of I've that? I've heard Israel. Okay. Yeah. He sings for her. Okay. So, fantastic. Okay. All right. I got to let Pastor Kim go. So she can go uh, work on another thing. Another thing here from God. Sunday's yeah. going to be a great day. We've had incredible services. Definitely playing. Oh, we got a bunch of stuff. Classes are the best. Yes, they are, actually, Puerto Rico. 
Ashley would yeah. love to have your kids join us for service. Yes, Ashley is one of our phenomenal teachers. What what age is that? What what's that called? Ashley is Ignite. Ignite is second. Is no kindergarten through fifth grade. Ignite. Okay, Ignite. Oh, I just kicked it there. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Ashley is fantastic. Okay, kids can't wait for Sunday mornings. It's the highlight of my week. Melissa, you're a blessing. Okay. There you go. Have an amazing week. We will see you on Sunday. Plan to be a part. Love Bye. you. See ya. Bye, friends.